All right, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Thank you for taking the time today to join us in our Fieldwire Forms panel discussion. Just a couple of quick housekeeping items before we get things started. If you want to ask a question, please use the Q&A feature where you can ask your question publicly, privately, or anonymously. There is a chat feature if you wanted to send a message directly to the panelists, but we ask please that questions be submitted through this Q&A module. It will just be really helpful for us to manage stuff as the session goes along. This session will be recorded and available on the portal later this week. For some quick introductions, my name is Sarah. I'm based out of our Calgary area office with our Enterprise Tech Solutions team for Western Canada. Also joining me today are Colleen and Grace from the Fieldwire team who will be helping me in the front half of the session today. I'm also very excited to introduce you to our panelists for today. We have Charles Bernard who's on Matheson Hall in Calgary. We also have Peter Guy who's on the West Calgary Ring Road. Lots of very exciting projects here in the West. And from the east, we have Shelby Barnstable, who's on the rail tunnel project, and William Tam, who is with the new Toronto Courthouse team. Just a quick little show flow so you guys know how things are going to work today. Grace is going to walk us through that Fieldwire Forms overview and the post survey results. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to fill that out before our session today. We're then going to hand it off to our panelists to showcase how they're using Fieldwire Forms on their projects. And now we'll open it up for some Q&A and discussion to wrap things up for the session today. So without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Grace from the Fieldwire team. Grace, take it away. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so really quickly, Fieldwire Forms is um, a new feature to Elliston, but it's not a new feature to Fieldwire. Um, forms have been around for um, a little over a year now with Fieldwire um, and the benefit of forms for Fieldwire and all of our other um, clients is it's really to eliminate that double entry that happens between the field and the office and it's also an ability for you guys to customize forms to your workflows. So the first, the last week in September, we had five live webinars that we hosted in conjunction with the Ellis Dawn team. Um, and there were 326 Elliston attendees between these five live webinars. Then on Monday, October 5th, following the trainings was our official Fieldwire forms rollout on all Elliston active projects. So over the past two months, um, we've heard a lot of great things um, from the Elliston team about Fieldwire forms. So I wanted to talk about some of those real savings with Fieldwire forms. So first are the printing costs. So saving and reducing paper and printing um, has really helped a lot of the teams. One project since using Fieldwire Forms has yet to print out a QC inspection report um, and everything is now in a digital format. Time savings is another huge one that we've heard. So increased reporting efficiency by digitizing these forms. Peter Guy, who you'll hear from later today said, that daily QC report form um, used to take about 30 minutes to complete from start to finish, and now takes about five minutes in a digital format, and it's completed while in the field. And then the streamlined communication piece. So really being able to be efficient on the go. Um, Peter also said, progress tracking and historical knowledge using forms for the QA QC process has been invaluable to us. And then lastly, this increased accountability and quality of forms. So Charles Bernard, who you'll also hear from later today, said instead of filling out forms at the end of the day um, or at the end of the week in the office, we're now able to see real life progress on forms being filled out in the field, improving accuracy of reporting. So taking some of these numbers um, that we've heard and based on usage that we've seen to date, um, and extrapolating increased usage across all projects um, with some very conservative math here, um, on average today for projects utilizing Fieldwire forms, they've been able to save 52 hours total. And if we were to extrapolate these across all Elliston projects on Fieldwire, that would be a $2.9 million annual savings for Elliston projects. And this isn't just necessarily money in the pocket, um, but this is people being able to move on to another task or being able to take a lunch break or possibly even go home a little early. 
So some of the post survey results that we saw um, after trainings and after time has gone by, um, mostly this uh, survey was filled out by project staff in the field. And then mostly we were able to collect results from the Calgary, Vancouver and Toronto areas. So to date, 6,940 forms have been created by Ellis Dawn projects. And that's um, through 19% of Ellis Dawn projects on FieldWire. So we also collect the main reasoning on why um, projects aren't using FieldWire forms so far. And the number one reason we heard is not everyone on the project is using or knows how to use FieldWire forms. When we also asked some of our surveyors what they were using field wire forms for on their projects, um, the ones listed in green are the most popular answers we heard. So pre-pour checklists, rebar checklists, safety write-ups, RFIs, concrete inspections. We also heard other ones like commissioning forms, weekly enviro inspections, weekly super inspections, above ceiling pre-board, embankment fill, paving and road placement. So field wire forms are being used across uh, all groups for lots of different reasons. And then how effective do you think field wire forms will be saving your project time and money? So right now an aggregate survey gave us a 7.3. So we're gonna move on here and talk to some of the panelists today about how their projects are utilizing field wire forms. So Charles Bernard is first up and I will let him take it away. All right, thanks uh, Grace. So Charles Bernard, as uh, she said, I'm in Calgary. I'm the superintendent for the Matheson Hall project. I've been with Ellis Dawn for 10 years and I've been using field wire for about seven years uh, across a various number of projects. So uh, we're at Matheson, we're in the superstructure phase right now, as you can see in the photo uh, that was taken last week. Most of our forms right now are uh, pre-pour stuff. Uh, we have a lot of AEC concrete, exposed concrete. So I'll run you through some of our, some of our forms here. So this is our, uh, our project here. So you should be seeing my forms here now. Um, so a couple of examples here are we have AEC columns so this form allows us to track the temperature of the day we're pouring. Uh, we have our tags where we're going through our checklist items, you know, no wire sticking out of the, the rebar. So it scratches the, the finished sauna tubes. The forms are plumb, uh, the slump of the concrete. So this one, you'll notice we even have a note here. We were having issues with our high slump concrete in some of our columns. We weren't getting the finish we liked. So we actually went back to a, a different mix and changed the slump. So uh, our guys noted that on the form itself. And then it's, uh, it's signed off by the superintendent um, that was reviewing it. So it allows us to track the weather and the temperature of the forms, making sure everything's consistent uh, pour to pour. Uh, another example is our concrete survey as built. So this is a bit different, but what we're trying to do with this one is log all of our as-built information in one consistent place. So um, you'll see it, um, we have areas where you can attach the pour break location, which we've just referenced to our pour break drawings. Uh, it'll say the name of the pour. And then we have it built. So the day the pre-pour survey was done. So this was the day before we poured. And then we've attached the as-builts that our field engineer has taken checked everything off. And then when we go through, we'll do the same thing. Once we, uh, after the pour, we'll do the same thing and attach the as built. And then we'll do a third one. Uh, once we pull the reshore keeps everything in one place and it's easy to find if there's any issues with, uh, cameras coming out or, uh, the slab. Uh, so, uh, and then our usual, we still have, uh, examples of our mechanical electrical pre pour checklist. So same thing, it keeps the weather in there for the day of the pour. Uh, the nice thing with this, instead of doing, um, like I said, accountability is you get guys taking photos of their work the day of the pour when they're signing it off. So it's not just uh, a guy filling it out in his office in a trailer, not, not actually looking at anything. So 
um, and then it's signed off by the foreman who's who's uh, reviewed the work. Uh, and then just so you guys, I'll show you kind of how we keep track of it on our plans. So this will be kind of our plan here. So our pre-pour. So this, you'll see this was one for our first pour. Here's our second pour. And then we have all the checklists pre-built uh, for the guys. Uh, we like to keep it separate. Uh, I find it's easier to assign and keep people accountable if they have their own tasks with their own forms. So you'll see if we go into the Ellis Dawn one here, we'll have our our embed inspection from Ferguson uh, and our concrete as built, which will be filled out as we take the reshores and the post pour. Uh, and that's about it. I'll send it over to Peter. Thanks, Charles. So my name is Peter Guy. Um, I've been with Ellis Dawn now for nine months, uh, working here in the Calgary area on the West Calgary Ring Road. Um, I've been using Fieldwire basically right from when starting working with Elston here and I uh, find it very valuable. So I'll just share with you my screen here. So in here are all my uh, QC quality check forms that I've created for the project, uh, both structure wise and earthworks and paving and uh, deep utilities as well. So one of the ones I really like is our subgrade turnover and reason being is that I've created in a way that allows to have multiple subcontractors sign it off and that will come along when we're basically handing over from the embankment fill to our GCB or pavement placement crew so it allows us to take you know the the work that's been completed by Sherway and then sign it over to Volker and then this is all completed in the field on an iPad. So we're able to do a walkthrough, uh, as you can see in some of these photos here, it's just basically your typical proof roll of the area. And then at the end of the inspection, we do a full sign off and then it's documented right there in the field. Uh, some of the other ones that I really like using is, for instance, our, uh, for deep utilities. This is one of my forms that I've been working on now. In a lot of cases, the utilities are going to start around October 26, but during the, the time of it, I've kind of captured all the photos, all the details throughout the progress of the work, um, and then even to the point of you know, documenting any kind of emails, any kind of field directions or changes, it's right in the form itself. So it allows for easy access to it right within the document. And then even when it's printed in a PDF, you can still access the attachments, the hyperlinks will work. And then allows you for, you know, adding in comments and kind of detailing out all the progress of the work as it has been happening. And then kind of within that, same thing with what Charles uses is I drop tasks in for the, you know, the various, you know, inspection forms that I'm using. And then it also allows me to, once I've done my portion of it, I can assign it to someone else and then just, you know, write them a note and indicate what, you know, what they require to do on it. So one of the cool features on, it was last Friday, we had an abutment pour. And one of the superintendents, he wasn't able to be there, but I kind of called him on the phone and I said, you know, you'll be able to kind of see the progress of the pour if you log into Fieldwire and go to the forum. So I kind of direct him where he could go. And then throughout the pour, he was able to get updates. You know, he was able to look at the pictures, see how the progress was going. And then we also, you know, I attached notes for him that he could click on, he could see the concrete, the time that comes in, the, the time out on the concrete. So he was kind of able to kind of have a live feed of the work that is being done, even though he wasn't being able to be present. So yeah, it's it's been a really useful tool. Um, creating the forms is is really simple and easy. Like I don't have any issue with that. And then kind of one of the things was, I'll just open up a previous form. Generally, we were doing these all in in a Word doc format. And, the problem with that from time to time is that you can always have formatting issues. It might be different from one user to another and having it in field wire allows for it to all be the same. So 
really like that, you know, the format is consistent with it. So it's really helpful in that way. All right, I'll, I'll pass it on. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Shelby. Um, like it's been said, I work for Ellis Don Sybil in the East. I used to work in the West. Uh, I've been with Ellis Don for, I guess, just over four years now. And I'm currently on the 401 rail tunnel project, which is one of Metrolinx's many uh, regional express rail projects. I'll jump into my forms. All right. So it's quite simple right now. Um, I've built this out purely, um, purely for QAQC. I'm the, the only one really driving field wire on my project right now. Um, and I finally got to the place where I, I really wanted to switch over to forms because the, uh, I was using hard copy, hard copy uh, checklists. And then I moved into Bluebeam and I was using the fillable forms feature there. Um, but then when I heard about this, I, it just it made sense. It's integrated into all the other core features of Fieldwire. Um, so the main activities on our project right now is the cast in place final lining. So a lot of the forms that have been completed so far are built around the pre-pour, post-pour, uh, rebar checklist, etc. We have some electrical grounding that goes along with that. Um, we've just started the, the cast in place, but after we're done, there'll be some, some final electrical elements that'll go in and we're just starting to work with uh, our utility subcontractor to build out our, our storm sewer and water main utilities work. So let's just jump in. Um, it's pretty repetitive. Tunneling in general is very repetitive. And so you jump into one of the forms, just your basic quality form. Um, they're all built off of our inspection test plans and the checklists that go along with them. Um, so this is one of them. I basically copy all the points over, you know, your check, check boxes and, and comments. I should pick a different one because this one isn't uh, filled out. The main thing I love about this is, is like the guy's been saying before, the, the photos feature as well as there's, this one only has two checklists, but I have other forms that have um, four checklists, sorry, checklist signatures required. And so instead of, you know, printing and scanning and then emailing if the person isn't on site, you can see them get uh, signed off as, as they go. And you're never questioning what's, what stage is my form at. Um, and so a lot of this is, I've, I've built it up front because just so I can get ahead of everything, um, make sure everybody understands what, what our process is and, and they can see the checklist, they can see how they're used. Um, so I've built out, you see our, our storm sewer and water main checklists. Um, I can just open up one here. The nice thing about this is none of this work has been completed yet, but we're working with a, a utility subcontractor who doesn't have a lot of experience with um, quality. Um, so I was able to go in there and create it, in this case, is the manhole and, and catch basin checklist. I go in and I make a, a form for every manhole or catch basin we have on the project. And all they have to do is go in there, find it, fill it out, send it to me. I make sure everything looks good. I sign it off and we complete the form and we move on. Um, and the main thing is I just love how everything is just in a central location. You know, you don't have checklists in a binder and you don't have checklists on different folders in Dropbox and then a common drive and it's, it's all in one place. Everyone has access to it or can have access to, access to it fairly easily. Um, and it just removes a lot of confusion, a lot of um, a misunderstanding. Um, and so I, I, I really loved using it so far. 
we haven't filled out too many forms as of yet, but um, I'm really looking forward to continuing to build out for the rest of the project. And then uh, when we get started with deficiencies and stuff like that, I think it'll be very, uh, very helpful as well. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll pass it on now. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning. Um, my name is William Tam, and I am currently a project uh, quality coordinator at the new Toronto Courthouse, which is uh, one of the projects out of the Toronto office. Um, it's a pre-through project with partnership uh, with Infrastructure Ontario. And um, yeah, currently I've been with Elston for a year and three months now. So relatively new, but uh, learning a lot nonetheless. And um, yeah, just gonna dive right into it. So currently I've, uh, our project, we're at the phase where we're trying to top off the building and uh, we've already started interior finish with uh, drywall and a bunch of m and &E stuff uh, for above ceiling. And um, I have actually tried to use our forms to implement more of uh, an approach for the pre-board and then wall inspection sign-offs as well as the above ceiling sign-offs. So the way we kind of uh, initially broke it down was I'll just take level two, for example, would be, we broke it out into areas and the sign off would just be for that area one, for example. Uh, but with the help of field wire forms, we were able to break down this bigger area into smaller sections where we can kind of uh, chew off more from uh, the inspection and take a more detailed approach in terms of logging photos and just checking out anything that might be like outstanding work or deficiencies. Um, so I'll just take this one for example, where we kind of uh, set up a task for sign offs in that room. And then, uh, sorry, just jump back a bit. So different colors represent a, uh, if it's ready for drywall or ready for a ceiling. Um, and that's kind of the approach that we took to give the supers and give the field team a opportunity to kind of see what's ready and what's not, and what's signed off in terms of a pre-board and above ceiling. So just open one of the, uh, pre-board ones, I guess, for electrical. We were able to kind of um, just go through our, our initial checklist and implement everything to, onto the field wire forms, which uh, we're able to kind of log photos, which is one of the great features that um, I like about field, field wire was like the integration of the 360 photos, especially with um, in-wall inspections where versus taking like one photo of, I don't know which orientation this picture is taken. I can take a 360 photo and on the app, you can see everything that that's happening as well. And um, one thing I found extremely beneficial with the field wire form was um, like Shelby said, to the, the ease of, I guess, having all the data into one location where during exporting the checklist, I feel like would be extremely efficient because it's all kind of broken down to categories that you need and you fill it with the specific details and everything's kind of logged. Um, one thing I'd say is probably to export it on a frequent basis because just in case, you know, things, um, you know, things might change and you'll have to kind of backdate to whatever you need. Um, and yeah, like I'd say another thing that's really good is the ease of getting sub trades to sign off on uh, on the checklist because back then it took a while to kind of uh, you know run on site. It might take five to 10 minutes to meet the foreman or whoever it is to sign off the checklist. Whereas now we can kind of dig coordinate digitally and um, get the sign offs, especially during COVID now, people are kind of a bit more uh, cautious of physical interaction. And this is definitely a, a plus for times like this. Um, yeah, that's that's all from me for now. But uh, I'll just pass this on over. Great, thank you guys so much. Um, so we're actually going to open it up to Q and A discussion here. Um, did have a few questions come in, so I think the. First question was around, um, some of you showed during your field wire forms 
um, the weather was populated in those forms. Um, and this question is more geared towards Colleen. Colleen, are those um, weather populations something they have to put in on a daily basis or are those automatic? So those are gonna be automatic as long as you're entering in the address of the project in your settings tab. Um, we do use a third party to populate that information, but as long as you put in the weather type section within your form, uh, that will automatically populate based on that address as well as the date that you select at the top of your form. Great. It's, it's also been useful because even previous forms uh, that I've now kind of turned over to the field wire form. I'm able to backdate it and it will give the weather details for that as well. So it's handy that way. Perfect. Um, a question here for you, Peter, and then if any of the other panelists feel like they want to um, jump in as well, um, feel free to. Um, can you give us an example of a form that you used in the past and how digitizing the form for field wire saved you time? Yeah, I can show that. So kind of comes back to the, the one I was, I was showing briefly where like this form would, would take a bit of time to fill out, coming down with all the details. And then the biggest thing that was always a, you know, inconvenience was just dragging photos in, formatting them, making sure they fit, cropping them. Um, and again, like this is something that I couldn't necessarily do in the field, like on an iPad, whereas, you know, the, here's basically how that form would, would show up and, you know, being able to use it on an iPad in the field, like I'm able to create it right, right there. And then it just, it saves to in the, the file size alone is a lot smaller, which makes it really handy as well. think even in this one yeah with all the details and that and then kind of the cool thing was also with the hyperlinks like like I said before like even in a pdf version you have it there accessible to you you can quickly attach it and then you'll have another document that will open up within the, the form itself great thanks peter a few more questions here so we have a question um, about, has anyone used forms for safety documents, i.e. trade facing documents? We haven't yet, but uh, it's something that we're looking into doing weekly checklist uh, inspections, your safety documentation. Like you can really use forms for anything. It's, just depends what you want to create or use them as. So you could definitely do it. Perfect. Um, William, looks like this question's directed towards you. Uh, why do you think field wire forms are easy to use? So um, actually setting up the uh, field wire form initially when I was going through it, I, I thought it'd be take a little bit longer, but um, after going through the learning session, it was kind of a pretty intuitive process. Um, so I guess just for a quick reference base point, um, this is a previous checklist that was kind of a physical checklist that I wanted to put on Fieldwire um, and kind of the process of transferring this whole checklist into a form took around like six minutes. Um, but once you set it up, you can reuse the templates over and over again. Um, to just figure out, you know, what you need on the checklist specifically or uh, for which trades it's required. And um, I think the whole process is pretty shallow learning curve, I'd say. So the, the benefit of that is like you can use one template and kind of duplicate it over and over again for different things. And then uh, it will save you a lot of time after the initial setup procedure. Great. Another question here, um, is there a way that when a project is opened up, we can have a number of templates automatically set up and loaded? 
Colleen, this might be directed towards you. Yeah, so right now the forms functionality, um, the way that we decided to move forward with it on the Ellis Dawn side is to have um, the project start from scratch um, so that people have an opportunity to get creative with the forms that they build on their projects. That being said, we do have a feature coming out shortly, which will allow you to share forms between projects as well as between the account and projects. Um, and this will allow you to, to get a form that maybe another project team has already built out. Um, for now, what you can do um, if you are looking to utilize a form would be to clone the form templates from another project, uh, but that would be at the creation of the project. So um, in early January, you will see the ability to send different forms between projects. Great. Um, another question, Colleen, that might be a little directed towards you. Can you hibernate previous forms so it's not overwhelming? That is a great question. Um, we recently changed the logic on the forms tab to actually match the logic of the folders in the plans tab. Um, so you may have noticed that I think it was about a week ago that we released that feature. Um, so you may have noticed on the plans tab, once you have over 100 plans, your folders are automatically collapsed. And we implemented the same logic for the forms tab. So now once you hit 100 forms, your folders will all automatically be collapsed. And then you can open just one folder at a time. So that should eliminate any overwhelming view. It'll also increase uh, or decrease load times um, when you're clicking into that forms tab. I have also seen some of my clients go through and export. You can batch export forms as a PDF and then upload them into the files tab um, so that they can clear up some space on the forms tab. So that's an option as well. Great. Thanks, Colleen. Looks like this question is opened up to all panelists. Does anyone have any tips or tricks for getting sub trades participation or buy-in for completing forms on their end? Yeah, I, can, uh, I can answer this as part of uh, what I was going to say as well. Um, it is something that is probably the most difficult part about um, forms that I find the biggest um, hurdles to overcome uh, is getting the buy-in um, on our project. It's a, a joint venture with another company um, and we have subs and so we have self-perform works. Um, and so it's a lot of different stakeholders that you have to get buy-in from. Um, the biggest thing is to just let them get their feet wet, um, put enough pressure on them to at least try to fill out a few forms. Um, I have one, one example on our project, our um, electrical foreman was a bit frustrated with us when we said we were trying to move things to field wire. And so now you have to fill out your, your quality documentation on there. Um, but once he got working with it, the main thing that, that sold him on it was the, the photos feature because before, before field wire, he would be completing the forms, hard copy and scanning and, and uploading the computer. And same with the photos, he'd be taking the photos. And then when he found time, he'd get to his office and, and upload the photos and then put them on a drive so that we have access to them. Um, so when he realized he can open the form, fill it all out on his phone, take the pictures, sign it off and just walk away. Um, he was quite impressed. And, and so he went from yeah being, thinking it was gonna cause him more work, but it was actually the opposite. And I've also found there's there's a couple of ways where you can make it a bit easier on um, the people that aren't great with, with documentation or technology or whatever. Um, when you're building out your templates, you can you can default certain um, you can default your templates so that if there's I don't know there's if there's a redundant element to to your checklist um, and so they don't feel like they have to fill an entire form over and over and over on field wire. You can default a bunch of stuff so it's just 
they open the template, these things are already filled out. They just fill in the information that has changed since the last element they filled out. Um, and then they can sign it off and be done. Um, there's another, another example, actually, uh, I had my surveyor foreman had actually gotten behind on a lot of checklists. He, he didn't have time and it wasn't a super important checklist to be filled as, as he completed his work, but it, it, it was a formality that needed to be completed. Um, and so I showed him how to use the duplicate feature. And so you fill out your, your checklist exactly how you want it. And then you can duplicate it as many times as you want. And so then he just basically replicated all of his, his checklists, changed the title, signed them all off, and he was done. And so when you can show the people in the field that there are little tricks like that, that will save them a bit of time and, and I guess remove that overwhelming feeling, I, uh, I think there's, there's something about every person's work that um, there's a value add in every person's scope of work, I think. And if you can find that and, and show them how, um, how it will benefit them, I think, I think that's the best way forward. It's always going to be a learning curve, but um, yeah. Great. Thanks, Shelby. Did anyone else have anything to add? I guess kind of just adding to that too, like being able to create drop down menus, which, uh, makes it really easy to kind of fill out the details. Like I have a few where it identifies like the item of inspection, whether it's, you know, abutment, rebar inspections, embankment fill, you know, seating, topsoil inspection. So it just makes it really quick. You're not having to duplicate all those, you know, titles, you know, within the form and you just have this quick pull down menu that you can go through the entire form with. So it makes it really handy. Great. Another question kind of on the same subcontractor line. Um, can you add a signature section for subcontractors to quality form that requires both Ellis Don and a subcontractor signature, like an above ceiling inspection or leakage test? Um, I guess just for uh... Right now, what I'm doing for my forms are, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but uh, yes, right now what we're doing is similar to, might be something that you're potentially looking into is, um, so we have uh, our trades, who is a electrical or m &E trade to sign off on uh, the work that they've completed for this in wall or above ceiling. And then at the same time, underneath we have uh, our uh, our trade or myself or whoever's going to be doing the other checking on the other side to uh, verify this information and take pictures as well. And then um, there'll just be two kind of sign offs for a specific area. Great. Thanks, William. Um, let's see here. Um, there is a question. Um, I know you guys have talked um, a lot about uh, photos on here. So I think I saw a question on photos. Did you? Oh, here's a good question. If there, is there any plan to implement a form from a PDF and making it fillable if a client has their own form they would like to use? Have any of you guys taken a form from a sub or a client and created a field wire form out of that? Yeah, I've done that. Um, you can't scan a PDF and like get field wire to automatically create it. It'd be no different than taking our old LS Don forms and just recreating them into a, the field wire form. The formatting might be a little bit different, but uh, you'll be checking off the same items and going through the same. So it, it's not a big deal. You can do it in a few minutes. Yeah, and just to add on to that as well, um, as Charles was saying, you know, you can create the form within Fieldwire. Um, 
through our form template builder, the benefits of that is being able to extract that data later on, whether it's um, the individual form or being able to do um, the extraction of the information from multiple instances of that form at once. Um, also gonna make it a lot easier for the teams to fill it out on mobile. Um, if the owner or contractor is really, um, uh, strict on the format of the form and it must be in that PDF form. If you upload a file, a fillable PDF to the file section, you do have the ability to fill that out. Um, but if you want to create more instances of it, you'll have to upload it every time. So that's a, just another reason why it's easier to build out that template in the form section. Great. Colleen, another question for you here. Um, can you upload bulk forms via spreadsheet. So kind of the same line about uploading forms into Fieldwire. Yeah, so I'll, I'll pretty much give the same response to that. Um, you have to build the forms out in the um, template builder. That's just because there's all these different types of fields that we have, um, things that you wouldn't get on, say, a spreadsheet or a PDF form or a paper form, um, things like drop down menus, you know, the different states of checkboxes, um, just like you see in tasks, um, and being able to add, you know, an infinite amount of rows within a table rather than being limited on something like a PDF. Um, so there, there isn't the ability to bulk upload, but once you create the template in Fieldwire once, you can utilize it over and over again. And then I want to add files after they have been submitted, i.e. a signed off approval from third party. Can I have a status editable only by an admin? I can answer that one. Um, so the statuses are totally customizable as well. Um, so you can add statuses and remove them. The defaults are going to be draft and submitted, um, but similar to um, the custom task statuses that we recently rolled out, you can indicate which permission levels you want to be able to both enter and exit that status. And then a little earlier, uh, Shelby, you talked about some of the challenges um, you or others face just like with getting subcontractors on board. Um, but just to open it up to the entire panel, uh, were there any challenges you or any of your team members faced and had to overcome implementing Fieldwire forms? I'll start. Yeah, I think it's just the same as uh, what Shelby and the guys were touching on is just uh, any new technology or new uh, implementation takes a bit of time to get guys on board. Uh, another trick that we found is just uh, two different things is sitting down and doing a tutorial, get your foreman on site, sit down, go through uh, how you're gonna set it up, how you want the forms filled out, show them. Uh, and then most of the guys, once they see it, and like Shelby said, you show them how quick it is and how easy the time saving it'll be for them, they'll jump on and anyone I've ever had in the seven years that once they've used it, they love it. Um, another thing for the guys that aren't as tech savvy is you can create a little PDF form that just does like a step-by-step -step is, you know, click here, this will open form, this give them an example that they can look at over and over again until they get the hang of it. I can piggyback off of that as well. If, if it stems back even further and it involves our own teams that don't know how to create the form templates or best best use cases of how to use them on your project, you can absolutely reach out to your enterprise tech solutions consultant in your area or someone from your quality team, anyone who's already gotten their feet wet within Fieldwire forms, and we'll be more than happy to sit down and kind of show you the ropes. There's lots of great resources available on the Fieldwire website, but there's lots of Elliston staff who've already taken a dive in as well. Just following up from uh, Charles' response, like kind of just walking through whoever it is, trades or our own team members through the process of walking, um, signing off or using the forums is probably the best way. And one thing I found pretty useful is um, to try to get feedback from the subcontractor as well in terms of things that they might look for. 
that way they feel more of like an engagement with the process um, and what they're signing off on to get a better understanding of you know what they're buying into um, that helped me to get persuade some of the trades to buy into this uh, I guess our program in place for field wire forms. Great. Um, there's a question, William, you might be able to answer um, this a little, but has this application been used in FFE delivery confirmation? Health authorities require confirmation of delivery into proper locations. Currently, we haven't set anything up for FFE yet, but um, for us, we have a lot of requirements as well as because we have a lot of um, kind of equipment in place that we have to make sure we have to deliver for our clients. And uh, definitely we're looking at something to set up for that subcontractor specifically to target those items. Um, and yeah, I can definitely maybe keep whoever it is in the loop if we come up with anything or if there's any suggestions that, you know, maybe I can potentially help with. I would love to see William tell you guys want to manage FF&E deliveries as well, so. Let me wrap my head around that. Yeah, we, yeah. we will see. <laughs> Great. Um, and then Colleen, this, this might be directed towards you, but regarding the weather dates, is there an option or an update that will allow more than one day for a checklist? Um, so I think if I'm understanding the question correctly, they're looking to show weather across multiple days. Um, and right now we don't have the ability to do that. Um, the reason is that when you are creating form templates, you'll probably notice the first step is to choose between a dated or an undated form. Um, only dated forms can utilize the weather type section. Um, and right now those are specific to a single day. Um, I would be curious to learn a little bit more um, from that person on what the use case would be there because um, that, that's really interesting feedback. So maybe we can connect after this. Yeah, kind of like, I think I know what Luke's talking about there is uh, one of my inspection forms that I had, it, it's kind of over almost like a month duration where mm -hmm. you know the work is continuing throughout the days. And I think what he was looking for is kind of basically a summary of the weather during that lauded time. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things I kind of do just to get around that is, you know, either throw in some photos with temperature checks as I'm, you know, throughout the inspection period or even just in the comments, writing out some details as, you know, what the weather conditions were like that day. Yeah, that's um, a good point. I think you can you definitely utilize the photos. That's um, a new one to me. Um, you can also create your own um, fields that are would be a manual fill in about the weather across the month. So if that is something that you would want to log on a daily basis, I think the best solution would be to create a table, have a date column that you fill that out, and then um, like a temperature and precipitation and fill it out throughout the month. Um, just we're uh, coming up to time and it's been a very lively Q&A. So thank you guys. Um, but just a few questions here. Um, how are you getting around multiple trades working on one form at once without having to change the assignee for a trade to work on the form? Definitely a, a loaded, complicated question. <laughs> but if anyone, I know Shelby talked a little about um, having trades and forms. Um, and then I'll also let Colleen hop into this as well. Yeah, I mean, we don't have multiple trades working on any checklists on our project, um, but we have multiple, I guess, members completing their own sections. And I guess the best way to get around that is just to decide on uh, an order of, of events, like. Subcontractor A gets it first, he completes it fully, he passes on to B. Um, I don't know if, you, if there's a better way than that, but I think that is the easiest workaround for now. And Colleen, I don't know if that's something that um, you're gonna allow multiple users like a Word doc to access at the same time. 
Yeah, so um, this is feedback that we've heard um, that I definitely will reiterate to the product team to have um, kind of something similar to watchers on tasks where you have like a contributors field. I, I definitely see a really good opportunity for that feature within the forms. Um, Sarah and I had discussed this early on, and I think there was a little bit of testing that was done uh, with some of these forms and the best solution um, that the team found was that there would be one um, person, probably a project coordinator on the Ellis Dawn side that would be in charge of making sure that each of those subs fill out their sections within the form. And so the project coordinator would assign it to sub A and then sub A would just know there would be a note in the form. So you can add something in the description that says, once you've completed filling out your section, please assign this back to whoever that project coordinator is. Um, that project coordinator will get a notification every time those forms are assigned back to them. And then they can see that it's now time for sub B to be assigned the form. Um, so it is a little, little bit of a workaround. Um, I think the reason that, that we found that that worked was uh, it's a little bit easier to just take control on the Ellis Dawn side rather than trusting sub A to know who to assign it to at sub B and so on. Um, but if you, you think that your subcontractors can handle that, that's definitely a, a good option as well. That's great. And to piggyback off of that, Colleen, if that's if you have one of those uh, collaboration type forms where it'll impact multiple different people and multiple different groups need to sign off or execute on something. If it makes more sense on your project from a tracking and management perspective, you could always break those forms out into just one trade. And then if you were to have, say, five or six different forms attached to one task, you can still track each form's completion by actually entering in the task where the forms icon actually changes color when the form has been submitted and completed. So that's another approach. There's no best practice that we've officially dictated at this point in time, because again, forms is still fairly new to Elliston. So we ultimately want to know your feedback. How is it working best for you? Is it more effective to break them out or does it make more sense to have everything in one, a one-stop shop? And then just making sure that there's kind of that one point person that's quarterbacking all of the activity. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Colleen. Um, just in the interest of time here, um, any questions that haven't been answered, we will follow up after um, this meeting today. But just want to give a huge thank you to all of our panelists. Um, anyone have any last minute comments from our panelists here? Come on, guys, not everyone at once. <laughs> Well, great. Um, thank, again, thank you so much to our panelists and thank you for everyone who submitted questions today. Um, there are some resources, which I'll let her, Sarah um, touch on here. Yeah, of course. And just like always, we don't want you to feel like you're walking away from this, not feeling equipped with being able to implement forms on your project. I know we had our training sessions two months ago at this point on Fieldwire Forms. The training is still available through the through the portal, but if you want to roll out forms on your on your site and this has given you some motivation and inspiration to want to do so, our, our Enterprise Tech Solutions team is here to help, including our tech desk. So I actually have a few meetings already booked this week. I think some people were excited leading up to this panel discussion. So people have preemptively reached out wanting to have a little touch base on how they could use forms on their project. So reach out to your consultant in your area if it's anything specific quality driven, our QAQC teams in all of the areas are able to help you out for that as well. And yeah, we just wanna make sure that you guys have the best experience with the forms as possible. Great. Um, thank you all for everyone who attended today. Thank you for um, your questions and thank you so much to our panelists. Um, I think this was extremely helpful and put a lot of things into context. Um, and thank you, Alistan, for letting uh, Fieldwire host um, today for your um, technology talk. Thank you so much, Grace and Colleen. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.